rabbit town. And in the very center of that busy little town stands a cottage, a neat twig cottage, with a neat brown roof, which is known to all as the very own home of Great Grandpa Bunny Bunny. Great Grandpa Bunny Bunny, as every bunny knows, was the ancestral founder of the town, which is a very fine thing to be. He liked to tell the young bunnies who always gathered around how he and Mrs. Bunny Bunny, when they were very young, had found that very briar patch and built themselves that very same little twig house. Oh, it was a happy life they lived there, deep in the woods, bringing up their bunny family in that little house of twigs. And of course, Daddy Bunny Bunny, as he was called then, was busy at his job decorating Easter eggs. As the children grew up, they helped paint Easter eggs. And soon, the children were all grown up with families of their own. And they built a whole ring of houses all around their parents' home. By and by, they had a town there, and they called it Bunnyville. Now, Grandpa Bunny Bunny had lots of help painting Easter eggs so much that he began to look for other jobs to do. He taught some of the young folks to paint flowers in the woods. They tried out some new shades of green on mosses and on ferns. They made those woods so beautiful that people who went walking there marveled at the wonderful colors as they talked among themselves. The soil must be especially rich, they said, or the rainfall especially wet. <laughs> and the bunnies would hear them and silently laugh, for they knew it was all their grandpa Bunny Bunny's doing. Years went by. Now there were still more families in Bunnyville, and Grandpa Bunny Bunny had grown to be Great Grandpa Bunny Bunny, for that is how things go. He still supervised all the Easter egg painting and the work on the flowers every spring. But he had so much help that between times, he looked around for other jobs to do. He taught some of the bunnies to paint the autumn leaves, purple for the gum trees, yellow for the elms, patterns in scarlet for the sugar maple trees. Through the woods they scampered with their brushes and their pails, and the people who went walking there would say among themselves, Never has there been such color in these woods. The nights in these woods must have been especially frosty. And the bunnies would hear them and silently laugh, for they knew that it was all their great-grandpa's plan. And so it went as the seasons rolled around. There were constantly more bunnies in that busy bunnyville, and great-grandpa was busy finding jobs for them to do. He taught them in winter to paint shadows on the snow and pictures in frost on wintry window panes and to polish up the diamond lights on glittering icicles. And between times, he told stories to each crop of bunny young around the cozy fire in his neat little twig home. The bunny children loved him and his funny bunny tail, and they loved the new and different things he found for them to do. But at last, it did seem as if he thought of everything. He had crews of bunnies trained to paint the first tiny buds of spring. He had teens who waited beside cocoons to touch up the wings of new butterflies. Now some specialized in beetles, some in creeping, crawling things. They had painted up that whole wild wood till it sparkled and it gleamed. And now the bunnies wondered, what would he think of next? Well, great grandpa stayed at home a lot those days and thought and thought and thought. At last, 
he told a secret to that season's bunny boys and girls. Children, great grandpa Bunny Bunny said, I am going to go away and I'll tell you what my next job will be if you will promise not to say. So all the bunny children promised. And Great Grandpa went away. The older bunnies missed him. And often they looked so sad. But the bunny children only smiled and looked extremely wise. For they knew a secret they had promised not to tell. Then, one day, a windy rainstorm pelted down on Bunnyville. Everyone scampered speedily home and stayed cozy and dry in their cottages. After a while, the rain slowed down to single dripping drops. Then, every front door opened and out the bunny children ran. Oh, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, those bunnies shouted. And they did a bunny dance. Great Grandpa Bunny Bunny has been to work again, has been to work again. Come and see what he's done, what he's done, what he's done. Come and see what he's done. And the people walking out that day looked up in pleased surprise. Have you ever, they cried, simply ever seen a sunset so gorgeously bright? The little bunnies heard them and they chuckled silently for they knew that this was the secret. It was all Great Grandpa Bunny Bunny's plan.